Okay. So explain to me what you got here. I got a science fair project about um, hitting spinning tennis balls. Um, my hypothesis was to see if if you hit a if you spin a ball, a tennis ball in the air and hit it with a tennis racket, it'll go straight. So this one was 130. 130 meters. That's to, crazy. I had to kick it in a soccer field. Yeah. Because yeah, it's you can't do that in your yard. 130 meters. Wow. If you were to change it next time, what would you do? Anything different? What I would do is I'd actually put salt in the water and stir it a little bit and let it there for a couple, like three days. Then put the drops in and see if they change. Yeah, I keep them out. Or, yeah, keep them out. And then once you cut them, yeah. then so, you put them in the fridge. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Yes. Okay. And you've tried the lemon juice, at, uh, like if you did slices? You did all the typing. Wow. So you did a lot of work on this. How long did it take you? Like five to like six days or something. Wow. So you, did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was fun doing it. The projects were imaginative and fun, and um, the level of independence the kids showed about their projects was really, really uh, very exciting to see uh, young children doing such products. And my highest results was with a catfish and chicken liver, with a cinco with a large amount of bass, and waxworms with the bluegill. It's important for people in the community to come in and help with the science fair, especially because if you're out in the community, you're doing the work, you may not directly relate it to what you're doing, but showing an interest in science projects and the science fair can inspire a child to become a scientist later on in life and, you know, follow a career path that they didn't know about before.